So tonight, we are launching into something, a uh, new series of topics called Pressure Points. Everybody say Pressure Points. Pressure Points. I want you guys to understand this, that as a Christian, you're going to face a lot of continual pressure to imitate the ways of this world. That is a constant pressure. And how many guys do admit you feel that pressure quite often? Whether it's through social media, whether it's through friends, whether it's just through your flesh. Our opening text I want to read from, it'll be on the screens if you have a Bible or if you have notes that you're taking. It's a short verse in Galatians 1 and 10, and it reads this. It says, Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people but of God. And, and I love how it starts off saying, obviously, because for every Christian, everybody who is a follower of Jesus Christ, it should be extremely obvious in your life, and it should be obvious to you that your goal as a follower of Jesus Christ uh, is not to win the approval of people, but your goal in life should be to win the approval of God. Next part of the verse says, if pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. He said, I'd just give up. I'd quit trying to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. If I wanted that was my goal to please people, then everything that I'm doing for God, it's for nothing. But our goal, my goal, your goal is to win the approval of God. So I hope that scripture sticks in your mind to remember that. Everybody say pressure. Pressure. That moment. When you're trying to finish a quiz, and it's a timed quiz or a test, and you're running out of time. Everybody say pressure. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. For some of you, maybe it's the end of a game that you're playing, and your team's losing, and you may be up to bat, or they give you the ball, or you have to take a shot. That's pressure. Maybe you're playing Jenga with your friends and the tower is double the size and wobbling with every touch and it's your turn to pull that last block. Pressure. That moment after waiting for weeks and weeks and you're finally going to approach that one significant other that you've had a major crush on. <sighs> Pressure. <laughs> or... When you're elbow deep in red, blue, and yellow wires, you're trying your best to disarm a bomb in 30 seconds before it destroys your entire city, your friends, and your loved ones, right? Unrealistic pressure. But, but that's what happens, right? Every other action move, very, that's, like, that's going to be in there somewhere. Pressure. I want you guys to know there are all types of real pressure that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. There's pressure in school. There's pressure when you start going to work, to college, within your family, within your relationships, friendships. When it comes to finances one day, maybe you already feel that with your family when they talk about finances. Pressure. Many people who are in high-pressure situations and experience great levels of stress, they see it takes a toll on your physical body, not just on your mind, but on your body. There's all these stress-related issues that people encounter, like headaches, skin rashes, infections, hair loss, lots of stress. I've been a youth pastor 15 years. Maybe that's what it is. High blood pressure, heart disease, back pain, muscle aches, upset stomachs, all because of stress and pressure. Medical research suggests that up to 90% of it, all illness and disease is stress-related. That's crazy to think about. Up to 90% of illnesses and disease, they say, is because of stress into the body. That's according to the CDC um, prevention. The pressure in your life, I want you guys to know this, it is real. And you're not the only one who feels it, okay? So I want you to kind of sigh of relief. You're not the only one who feels that constant pressure in all these different areas of your life. As a student, you need to be aware, though, that no pressure is more powerful or more dangerous than peer pressure. Peer pressure is defined as it's social pressure by members of one's peer group, your friends, those you interact with, those you hang out with. That pressure pushes you to take certain actions or to adopt certain values or otherwise conform to do whatever that group's doing so that you can be accepted by them. 
The way this works is when you build relationships, those friends become an important influence in your life. That begins to alter your behavior. Pressure can have an effect an effect in so many different areas, like style. Have you ever seen a friend who dressed one way and then they came back after summer and to the end of the school year, they started hanging out with new friends. They're dressing completely different. I'm like, what are you wearing? Like, what happened to you? Anybody ever happened to a friend like that? They grew out, they go through these stages, certain tastes, certain foods, certain appearances, certain ideologies, certain values from peer pressure. Unfortunately, peer pressure many times, it goes to another level and is commonly associated with risk-taking in wrong areas. And this is documented that it can happen with your speech, with cussing, or with what you look at, pornography, tobacco use, crime, drug abuse, sexual activity, all majorly affected, not just by your flesh, but primarily because of peer pressure. If you constantly hang out with friends who engage in these kinds of behaviors, it will eventually alter your behavior. Peer pressure is not only outside of the church, but peer pressure is also inside of the church. You're not safe within the church of having certain pressures. We feel it all the time, wherever we're at. And the church peer, uh, church culture, peer pressure can go to another level as far as affecting your relationship with God. Just by who you hang out with, just by who you care about that other person or who you sit with, it can affect your relationship with God. It can affect your treatment of one another. It can affect your willingness to worship. It can affect your willingness to lift your hands, to clap, to shout, to step out of a seat, to dance, to leap for joy. It can affect your desire to pray, to open up, to, to respond to the word of God at the altar or to cry or whatever it may be. It can affect your commitment to serving in an area of ministry or giving extra time. It can affect involvement in events and in unity. Peer pressure is very powerful. You should never underestimate its influence and its effect on your life. That's why it needs to be, this first focus of this lesson, it needs to be classified. It needs to be identified and dealt with. So I want to go over just three uh, points tonight, pressure points that's connected to peer pressure. The first pressure point I want to talk to you about is your weakness. Everybody say, my weakness. Why you're so easily affected by peer pressure. Point one, your weakness. Simply put, you're affected by peer pressure because you're a human being. Isn't that great? Feeling pressure and temptation, it's a part of your human nature, your flesh, who you were made to be. Peer pressure is not something that just developed over time in modern society or culture. It is something that is found in the characteristics of the very first two human beings to walk planet Earth. Genesis 2, we read about the story of Adam and Eve, and a serpent pressured Eve into taking a bite of the forbidden fruit. And then soon Eve tells Adam to take a bite, and fully knowing that is wrong, Adam felt the pressure from Eve, and he took a bite, and because they caved in, they were punished by God and removed from the garden. It was also found in the New Testament, in the life of one of the apostles in Galatians 2, 11 through 13, Paul talks about how the apostle Peter was affected by peer pressure. Look at this on the screens in verse 11 of Galatians 2. It says, but when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face for what he did was very wrong. I'm like, whoa, didn't know that was in the Bible. He had to get in his face a little bit. You imagine like seeing that? Paul's like, hey, what's up, Peter? Like, dude, give me some space. Like, he got in his face. Verse 12 says, when he first arrived, he had ate with these Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But then afterwards, some friends of James came in. Everybody say peer pressure. And then Peter, because of James' friends, he wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. Because of his peers, the circle of influence that was around him. This is one of the disciples. He says he was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. Verse 13, as a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. Isn't this crazy? This was all the way back to the early church, the followers of Jesus Christ. This is 
Peter that we're talking about. The guy who preached in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. He's not a weak, lightweight Christian. But I want you guys to understand this, that nobody gets a free pass from peer pressure. It affects everyone. It's affect everyone from the beginning of time until this day, this night. And no doubt, already here tonight before church, and now you felt a little bit of peer pressure, the way you look, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you walk, the way you worship, the way you prayed in pre-service prayer, because you were a little bit concerned about a peer and what they thought about you. It's easy to classify peer pressure as a human weakness um, in everyone's lives that need to be dealt with. But understand that while we have some weaknesses and pressure points, God Almighty and His powerful Spirit can help us overcome our weaknesses and our peer pressure. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 9 says, Paul is speaking about his weakness. He says, Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, My grace is all that you need. My power, it works best in your weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. And I want you guys to hear this. That in your most high pressure situations, when you feel weak, when you feel vulnerable, remember that is the perfect timing and a great opportunity for you to turn to God, for you to recognize, you need to kind of classify, hey, this is a weakness in my life, this is something that I'm going through, but then to turn to God and allow His power to be on display in your life and in your weakness. Now the second pressure point we're going to talk about tonight is that I want to look at is your problem. Everybody say, your problem. How you're affected by peer pressure. A few years ago, uh, psychologist Ruth Berenda and her associates, they had this interesting experiment with teenagers, just like you guys, designed to show how a person handled group peer pressure. And this is pretty amazing. The plan was simple. They brought a group of students like yourselves, 10 students into a room for a test. Each group of 10 was instructed, you had to raise your hands when the teacher pointed to the longest line on three separate charts, Okay. What one person in the group did not know was that the other nine in the group had already been instructed ahead of time to vote for the second largest, not the correct answer, the second largest line, which was the wrong line. But that one student who was not in the loop would typically glance around at everybody else, kind of frown in confusion, and just slip their hand up with the rest of the group. The instructions were repeated and the next card was raised. And time after time, because of peer pressure, the self-conscious student would sit there saying a short line is longer than a long line simply because they lacked the courage to challenge the group, to stand up and to say, hey, that's wrong and that's right. This remarkable conformity occurred in about 75% of the cases was true of small children, high school, middle school students as well. So there are many reasons why the power of peer-to-peer relationships can create pressure. Another social psychologist, Wendy Trainer, explains this phenomenon in an article called The Identity Shift Effect. She said that a student is disrupted when faced with a threat of external conflict, like social rejection. Your friends no longer wanting to hang out with you for failing to conform to a group standard. So to avoid that rejection, they just conform to the new group standard. And when they do, it eliminates that internal conflict. You guys know that internal conflict, what that feels like, that awkward moment, that, that stressful peer pressure moment where you just want to throw up and you're like, I will do anything to get out of this moment right now. You guys know what I'm talking about? Anything not to be embarrassed, anything to not stand out, to take this pressure away from me. The student is doing something that they know is wrong. And this creates conflict because that person becomes a person who violates their own personal standards. So to resolve that conflict, they must have an identity shift where they adopt the new group standards as their own, eliminating that eternal conflict. This is your problem, what we're talking about, our second point. Through this process of constantly caving into peer pressure, a person leaves with a new identity. 
time and time again, caving into peer pressure, not saying what is right, not standing up for what is true, you have be, leave with a new identity. The result of a student, that's two Ks into peer pressure. Proverbs 29, 25 says this, fearing people, it is a dangerous trap. You fear more what other people think, but trusting the Lord, that means safety. So if you fear people, you fear or worry about their opinion, their feedback, before you uh, long, you're going to compromise your biblical principles. Before long, you're going to compromise your apostolic identity. And ultimately, you'll compromise your relationship with Jesus Christ. But hear the word of God. It gives us some helpful instructions to overcome this weakness. In Romans 12, 2, it says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. But you students, in those moments, depend on God. You let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So students, it is extremely important that at an early age you surrender your life to God and you tell Him, Lord, here are my weaknesses, here are my struggles, here are these pressure moments that I am dealing with. This is the moment, this is a scenario, God, that gets me every single time, my inadequacies, my struggles. And you take them, God, so here, take them. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, God, as I'm praying, as I'm reading your Bible, renew my mind, God, change the way I think about this pressure, and help me, Lord, to over. I have with me tonight something um, called a bench vice. And some of you who uh, four or five years ago will remember this fun device. A bench vice. And most often it's used in different types of workshops. And it's a simple mechanism where you can make the sides of this tool come together or open and apply great amounts of pressure onto something. And just because I'm curious and this is supposed to be a small group night, I want your help uh, to have a little bit of fun tonight. How many guys would love to choose something from this right here and try to pressure and break it just to see what happens, okay? All right, so first one up, we're just going to throw this ball and whoever gets it, you get to pick something, all right? Oh, <laughs> Zane says, my turn! Let's go. All right. Get. Let's just pray the, the Braves have strong hands like that tonight. All right, Zane, come on up here, bud. Let's give Zane a hand. All right. So there's all kinds of weird stuff. And each night, if you guys have some suggestions, we can, we're going to do this for the next three weeks. So if you have some stuff to up our game, please let me know. It can't be flammable. So we have a coconut. That could be pretty hard. We just have a bottle of water. We have Play-Doh, a birdhouse, an apple, a ball, um, airplay, a candle, a car, whatever you want. Just a can of uh, Vienna sausages. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you get to be official here. Not, all right, <laughs> I'm gonna step back. All right, so stick it right here. We'll get it started. Which way should you, you want to go? You want to go straight up or you want to go sideways? Sideways. Ugh. It's all, no, it's all you, man. You, you caught the ball. All right, here we go. Oh, <laughs> oh you're going to smell like Vienna sausages all the way home. It's like a fountain. He was a Vienna sausage <laughs> Nobody wants to get under the Vienna sausage belt. All right, give it a couple more turns.
Something that came out of Nora's diaper earlier today. Okay. All right, let's end. Oh! <laughs> you guys see this angle? <laughs> All right, we're going to undo this one. One of our ladies. All right, here we go. One, two, three. All right. Ugh. All right, Anna, come on up. All right, you're going to have to have your superhero arms. This could be the strongest one to do, but you can give it a try. All right. Coconut. All right, here we go. Oh, that was quick. Keep going, keep going. That probably smells better than Vienna sausages, to be honest, so let me get a little bit of that. <laughs> hey, give her a hand. Very nice. You sure can. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to go ricochet off the wall. Here we go. Oh, Aiden, I'm on down. All right, wherever you want. We got a candle. I don't know if that would do anything cool or not. An apple. It's almost Christmas time. We can put him in there. I don't know if this would do anything. It's just a... Bottle water, that could be fun. Orange. All right, put her in there. Here we go. Righty tidy, lefty Lucy. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens with the. <laughs> Anticlimatic. Just keep going all the way to the. <laughs> all right, ladies, here we go. All right, come on down. Who would you like? It might pop. I don't know. I, I don't have no idea. Let's put... You want the goggles? Oh, yeah. Alright, you're good. All right, here we go. Let's see. Is it going to go? Boom! Or it's going to go? Pssst. All right, keep going. Boom! No. <laughs> All the way. That's it. It withstood the press test. Good job. All right. Impressive. Wow. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Come on down. All right, what do we got? The apple. All right. All right. Righty tidy. Go ahead. Give it a. Yep.
All right, ladies, any ladies want to go? Any ladies want to go? The front row ladies only, all right. No, you can't do it twice. All right, here we go. Keep going, keep going. You gonna go? All right, come on up, Anna. Bottle of water, I don't know what this is. A candle, a car, birdhouse. Water bottle, all right, water bottle! Nice. All right, here we go. Crank it. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, Nate, what do you want? The Nutcracker! It's beginning to look a lot. Try both the ways. A little bit higher, raise it up. All right, squeeze. All right. All right, ladies. Any ladies want to go? Oh, the poor nutcracker. He's met his match. <laughs> nice. We shall see. <laughs> Destroyed. All right, last thing. What do you want to do? Candle. All right. We'll do one girl, one guy. All right. Do you want to go that way or you want to go? All right, we'll do one girl, one guy. All right. Oh, go, go. Lately I've been really watching the nightly news. Don't seem to find the rhythm. Just want to sing the blues. Feels like a song that never stops. Like All right, Isaac, come on down. Pick one more thing. Here we go. Destroy.
<laughs> that is so satisfying. <laughs> all right, let's let them, let's give them all a hand. Good job, everybody. Everybody, go back to your seats. Back to your seats. So once again, if you have some suggestions for next week, um, let us know. All right, so everybody, back to your seats. Everybody, listen up. A couple more things to talk about tonight before we wrap it up. So. In each of these scenarios, hopefully you had a little bit of fun. Um, but in each scenario, two things happened. Either something was revealed of what was in the inside or something was revealed of what that object was really made of. The point of this entire illustration for us, and this is the big focus of this series, is that when peer pressure comes into your life, it is the ultimate test there's one thing that you realize that you'll learn, that you'll study, that students deal with when it comes to school, when it comes to peer groups, when it comes to worship, when it comes to church, is your uh, response to peer pressure. Peer pressure is the ultimate test of Christian character, and it is revealing of what you are made of. It reveals what is really inside of you as a Christian. It reveals what you are made of. And in your relationship to your, your walk with God, in relation to your walk with God, peer pressure is going to reveal one of two things as a follower of Jesus Christ. Everybody listen up. First, it's going to reveal if you care more about what man thinks about you or two, if you care more about what God thinks about you. Because your response in a peer pressure situation when it comes to compromise your beliefs, your apostolic identity, you're going to respond in a way that shows I care more about what man, what this person, what my friend cares about me. And I'm going to respond in a way that's going to be pleasing to them. Or I'm going to respond in a way that shows that I care more about what God thinks about me. And no matter what this peer pressure situation is trying to get me to do to conform, to compromise, I ultimately know no matter the pressure or how uncomfortable it is, I care more about what God thinks about me. So I'm going to ultimately do what God wants me to do. Our focus scripture in our opening text for this Peer Pressure Point series is Galatians 1.10. It says, obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. And hopefully, after a little bit of this, that scripture has a little bit more meaning. Students, peer pressure will make or break you. The outcome depends on who you depend on. Peer pressure reveals the status of your relationship with God. Peer pressure reveals the contents of your heart. So I want to make sure that we don't fail this pressure point test. So far we talked about two things, your weakness, your problem. And the last thing in response to this, my final point for tonight is simply your God. Your God. Peer pressure really does reveal a lot of things. But one of the main things is if you know God and if you have a good relationship with him. 1 Corinthians 15, 33-34 says, Don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad company, that corrupts good character. It says, don't be fooled by those peer pressure situations. It says, verse 34, You think carefully in those moments about what is right and stop sinning. For to your shame, I say that some of you, you don't know God at all. But I pray that's not the case for you today. I urge you to wake up to the fact of who God is and start caring about his opinion of your life more than anybody else. Because that's what it really comes down to. Revelation 1.8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. Since God is so much more than a peer. His 
reaction to your decision should matter most. When you stand up to your peers, they may react and there may be some temporary effects on your social status, but God's reaction has a lasting effect on your soul status. God is the ultimate authority in this earth. His opinion should be the only opinion that matters. And He will help you students, as I mentioned, overcome the pressure points. If you learn to look to Him, Rather than to look to them. Psalms 118.5 says, In my distress, in my pressure moments, I prayed to the Lord. And the Lord answered me and He set me free. 2 Corinthians 4.8-9 says, Hey, we are pressed on every side by troubles. Hopefully that verse has a little more meaning when it comes to peer pressure. It says, we're, we're being pressed on every single side. But... Because of the relationship with God, the power that is within you, caring more about Him than about them, you can say we are not crushed, we are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. In the last scripture of the night, James 1.12 says this, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. And afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who who love him. Amen. Let's all stand. Because I want you guys to simply know tonight, we had a lot of fun and kicking this series off, that it doesn't matter who you are, no one here is free of feeling peer pressure. And it doesn't change from middle school to high school to college to being a young adult to having a family. You're always going to feel some sort of peer pressure in whatever phase of life. The pressure points in your life are powerful and they can have a controlling effect on your life, on your decisions, on your actions. But tonight, with the help of God, I simply pray as we start this off that you would get your focus off of your peers, off of fear, off of rejection, off of possible isolation, off of your need to be accepted by your friends and simply make your decision that your focus is going to be on Jesus Christ. And with His help, you can beat peer pressure. With His help, He will give you that strength to endure, to help you in the time of peer pressure.